Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips. And uh, just a couple reminders. One is I'm doing healthcare calls, work, uh, calls for healthcare workers on Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, some people are looking for other types of opportunities in healthcare, and we're going to talk about those every Monday night, almost every Monday night, uh, for a while, as long as um, the current uh, status of healthcare is where it is. Um, second thing, I sold out the boot camp um, for October, the Optimal Health and Life with uh, Pam Popper um, for the October one. So I scheduled one for November 19th through 20th, and um, that one is filling up too. So if you would like to participate in one of these, this this year, this is going to be the last one I do. There will be no more weekend programs after this until sometime um, in the first quarter of next year. So I want to talk about cancer treatment. I've been talking about it most Tuesdays because we are coming to the end of our prostate uh, defeat breast and prostate cancer months, plural. Uh, it was a September, October campaign to get people more focused on prevention instead of waiting until you have cancer and then looking for cures, which is what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. So uh, remember, you can sign a pledge card saying you're going to take better care of yourself in order to prevent cancer. You get a $100 gift card get 25 people to sign that same card and you get another $100 gift card so you can make $200 toward um, courses, wellness forum health courses. So um, I wanna talk about cancer treatment because as I said, I think I can motivate you pretty well to want to pay attention to um, prevention when you take a look at what the treatment um, landscape really looks like. So according to an analysis prepared by two physicians, Gilbert Welch and David Carr, about half of physician directors of National Cancer Institute designated cancer centers receive payments from industry. The data were drawn from an, the uh, open payments database for the years 2015 through 17. And I will tell you now, I don't have any reason to believe that anything has changed since then in 2021. Um, in 2017, there were 53 physician cancer center directors listed. And as a group, they had received $4.42 all right. Why does this matter? Well, according to the authors, NCI designated cancer centers have a lot of influence on cancer care all over the United States and the treatments that patients find out about. These centers get a lot of funding for the government, which means that we're all indirectly paying for their work. Cancer drugs are blockbusters. They can make drug companies hundreds of billions of dollars. So it is not surprising that drug companies to provide, do provide money to center directors. I think it'd be pretty naive for any of us to think that this is for altruistic purposes. The companies hope to out, you know, influence the outcomes of um, uh, outcomes and opportunities available to them um, as a result of their funding. So, and we know that this type of influence takes place. It takes place even outside of cat cancer centers. But I'll give you an example specific to this, all right? Um, an inoculation developed in Cuba for lung cancer was approved by the FDA for a U.S. clinical trial. The product was designed to treat non-small small cell lung cancer and was introduced to the Cuban market in 2011. The U.S. trial involves a combination of the Cuban drug and a checkpoint inhibitor made by Bristol-Myers, and it's being conducted, the, the trial is being conducted at Roswell Park, a very powerful cancer research center that played a major role in deceiving the public about the efficacy of PSA testing for early detection of prostate cancer. A Fox News station in Chicago reported, quote, it's a medical breakthrough that could literally save millions of lives and quoted Dr. Santosh Rao of MD Anderson Cancer Center as saying that, the, that this product has, quote, been shown to significantly increase life expectancy and is cheap and seems to be effective for a lot of patients. Well, as it turns out, that's medical speak for hardly worth talking about in real terms. A recent phase three trial showed that patients who received the Cuban concoction lived for 12.43 months as compared to 9.43 months for patients in the control group. Now let's face it, folks, an extra three months of life hardly sounds like a significant increase in life expectancy or a breakthrough medical treatment to most cancer patients. I mean, if you're 44 years old, you're probably thinking about how to live for 50 years, not an extra three months. But of course, this isn't going to be fully disclosed to cancer patients and the combination treatment will be promoted as a breakthrough. It's kind of appalling that precious and scarce research dollars that we provide as taxpayers are being squandered in this way. 
In the meantime, almost no money is invested in promising alternative treatments like the use of water fasting or calorie restriction or fasting to potentiate chemotherapy and even ketogenic diets for certain types of very difficult to treat cancers. At this time, there are no NCI designated cancer centers that are researching the effects of any of these strategies on cancer patients. Obviously, there's not much money to be made in not eating or teaching people how to eat a ketogenic diet if they have certain types of brain cancer or fasting to potentiate chemotherapy. The money is in the blockbuster drugs and that's where all of the effort gets expended. Which brings me back to the importance of prevention um, and why you wanna sign this pledge card. I mean, it's just an act of saying, okay, I'm gonna do it. I mean, people talk about improving their health all the time. They talk about changing their diet and lifestyle habits all the time. It's time to do it folks. And the time to do it is now. It's always better to prevent than treat. And sometimes people say, I just don't have time to focus on that now. Well, I will tell you, if you end up with cancer, you'll find some time to focus on treatment because you're gonna have to. So if you're willing to do it for treatment, how about doing it for prevention? You know, it'd be best to, we could, we could probably reduce the incidence of cancer by 70 or 80 percent and certainly slash the death rate if we just got everybody taking better care of themselves and prevention is always better than searching for cure so sign that pledge card send me an email at pampopper at msn.com if you are um this is going to be your moment like i'm going to sign that card it will be a sign to myself that i'm actually going to do it this time and, uh, and I'm going to get some other people to do it too, because it's a it's the best act of kindness is to help somebody um, get on board to take better care of themselves. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you tomorrow with more news on alternative channels, by the way. But if you want to get on that mailing list, uh, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. Thanks for watching.